uh, float lesson and look at that one first, or uh, just kind of assume uh, that you'll figure out more details about it later and get a general idea for how to lay out your pages before you get into some of the more uh, advanced stuff with layouts and other things like that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to kind of uh, talk about the different techniques that are used to create a layout without going into too much detail about the specific properties that are involved and how they work. So general advice for layouts in uh, creating a layout in any website. Um, it used to be that everyone would make their website laid out with uh, tables in HTML. Um, and it was kind of complicated to learn tables, but it gave you a lot of control about positioning things to the left and right of each other, above and below each other. And you had to uh, you know, make sure that the uh, images would kind of line up correctly and that your content wouldn't overflow to expand the table cells. Um, and it had its own problems, but the biggest problem was that it was not semantic and it, it broke up the page into a lot of uh, nonsensical different little sections that made it completely inaccessible to um, anybody with uh, a screen reader or um, a, a device that didn't quite render it the same as everybody, every normal browser. So for example, mobile devices have trouble with, uh, with tables and layouts. And it's just generally a bad idea. It's, just, it's a violation of the principle of separation of content from style. Um, so don't use tables for your layout, use CSS. Um, another thing to avoid is uh, divitis, which divitis, like you know, like a sickness, and it's kind of like uh, what what we call when you get a little bit carried away with uh, using divs as hooks for your CSS. So it's kind of like the second uh, problem that we had after everybody realized that table layouts were bad. Then everybody started using just tons of divs, and every time you need you know your CSS to do something to the layout, you just throw another div in there, give it an ID, and then. A, send your CSS to attach to it and, uh, and do that. And pretty soon you just had uh, just walls of divs, just, just hundreds of divs on each page and it got out of control. <laughs> and it's very easy to do that. Um, so it's best to try and limit the number of elements that you're adding. Um, div is an element in HTML that has no semantic meaning. So it's fine for you to add it anywhere. Um, and it, it, it's a good hook for CSS and it's necessary. However, um, there are also a lot of semantic elements which are much better than adding div. And if you can hook all of your CSS into those, your page is gonna end up being more accessible and displaying a lot better in the long run. So these are the, uh, the new uh, semantic elements for layout that are in HTML5. Um, and uh, so if you're using HTML4.01 as your uh, doc type, you probably don't wanna be using these, although um, they are backwards compatible, so there's not really any serious reason not to use them. Um, and so when you're laying out your, your web page, you want to make sure you use all of these um, and then hook your CSS into them. Um, and it's already on almost all major browsers now, um, something that you can do, uh, and it'll just get better as time goes on. So I definitely advise using these HTML5 elements.